Welcome to part five of us building our first ever veg patch. In this video, we're going to cover planting the first of our veg plugs from Marshalls. And I'm also going to show you how we've installed our gate to the veg patch on sloping ground. By far the most challenging portion of this project has been installing the gate. So I'll share some of our mistakes and how we've tried to rectify those. We commenced on this about six weeks ago. It's really been exhausting. I'm quite drained. There's been a lot of digging, there's been a lot of building, there's been a lot of uh, wheelbarrows going up and down the hill with compost and sand and any number of things. So I reckon we're about a week away from actual completion. Marshals have also been in touch with us and they've assured us that we will be receiving our remaining veg plugs in the coming weeks. So in part six, we're gonna basically wrap up the series by showing you how we've completed our veg patch. And we'll also pass comments on the actual quality of the veg plugs that we've installed from Marshalls. And we'll also give you an update on the stuff that we've planted from seeds. So let's get stuck into this video and I hope you enjoy it. The first of the vegetables arrived from Marshalls. These are the Maris Piper potatoes. So we're gonna be planting them in this bed here, right at the bottom of our veg patch. So we've got nine in this area. They've all been planted to a depth of 15 centimeters. They are spaced uh, about 50 to 55 centimeters apart uh, from each other in all directions. We're gonna cover them with some soil and then uh, we're going to give them some water and we're going to leave them and see what happens. So that's the Maris Pipers. In fact, we still have six left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate two rows, uh, probably up in this bed here. So we basically subdivided them again, uh, all part of our companion gardening approach. As a quick comment and update on Marshalls, We've now received four deliveries from them, so things as they are ready to come out of their warehouse get posted to us. The plants are generally put into boxes that are tight enough to hold them in place with a definite sign that says this way up. But given how many hands these boxes must change, um, this particular box that had the leaks in it was an absolute disaster. We've had to try and salvage them. It had obviously been tipped upside down, so some of the leaks have fallen out. Uh, there's a, a patch that just doesn't have a leak at all. So this particular one hasn't been great. I appreciate that it can't be very easy to ship um, live plants. But given that Marshalls are an established provider of live vegetables and veg plugs, you would have thought that they'd have a slightly better system uh, to get stuff through to us. Nevertheless, we'll try and salvage what we've got here. So I'm just planting the leaks now. As you take out the leaks out of these containers, the actual soil itself is very, very soft. So they all fall out. So you just gotta be a little bit delicate to make sure that you actually get them into the ground properly. So that's the first 12 leek jollins planted. They are in. Uh, the soil itself is really, really damp and really wet because uh, we have had a lot of rainfall over the last couple of days. So there'll be no need to water these guys. This morning we received our next delivery from Marshalls. This is the Oriental Mix baby salad leaves. We eat a lot of salads over the course of the summer, so it's always great to have a variety of salad leaves. We are growing several different varieties. I'm quite intrigued about this one. So this particular salad leaf set is going to go into our box. It's gonna go alongside the leeks that we planted yesterday. In terms of the quality, the leaks that arrived were in a horrible state, as I showed you yesterday. The lattice, despite being tipped upside down in our post box, has kept its shape remarkably well. And the actual uh, seedlings themselves are far, far stronger. So this is a, a far better set. Uh, they were packed uh, clearly a lot better. They're, they are very compact in the actual trays. So these uh, should pose absolutely no problems getting them into the ground. So with each passing day, we're edging closer and closer towards completing our veg patch. The next thing that we need to do is put the gate on. Now, this was always going to be my biggest headache because as we can see, as we step back a little bit, this ground slopes quite a bit. Uh, you can actually see from the paling fence 
down the side how much it's stabbed. So it is quite a significant gradient. Uh, so we have two options. One is to open the gate inwards towards the vegetable patch. Uh, the issue there is that uh, we are going to hit the bark chippings, which are piled up about five centimeters high. And the biggest concern that we have is that because we've laid the chicken wire to try and rabbit proof this, we need the gap underneath the gates to be as small and tight as possible to prevent anything from getting in underneath there. So ideally we want that gate to be virtually resting on the ground to keep the gap as small as possible. So what I figured, what we'll try and do today is we're gonna be using our pickaxe. We're going to excavate a square, which is gonna be more or less the length of uh, an open gate uh, down to a height that will be level with this area here. Uh, once that is finished, I will be laying more chicken wire in there and the chicken wire will continue to run in line with the other meter that we have here. So that's the plan. I'm gonna get the pickaxe and the spade ready and we're gonna start digging. I've got to say, if you want a good old school arm workout, working the pickaxe is certainly one way to do it. It really is a great bit of exercise. Uh, that aside, the one thing I haven't mentioned is that when we went and bought our paling fencing, they actually didn't have a gate that was uh, in the same design as ours. So we're making our own gates simply by taking one of the paling fences. We've cut it in half and we'll have the longer piece on that side and a slightly shorter piece on that side is just the way it worked out. That is the longer piece that is in position now. So we can see that where the gate opens is quite good. I might just extend that by just another 10 or 15 centimeters just so we have a nice uh, area and a border around the gate. In order to ensure that the excavation that we made is sufficiently deep, we've put the gate on. The gate looks great. It's nice and even. It works with everything else. Now the biggest thing with sloping land and gates is that because we don't want little animals getting in underneath the gate, uh, you kind of have to work with the slope. What I mean by that is that we started on the left hand side, which was the highest portion. So if we'd started on the right, that means that down the left we would have had the biggest gap. So what we did is uh, we put that as low as we could on that side the left-hand portion of that gate. And as we moved across to the right, we started to run out of space. So what we've done with our paling fence gate is we modified it by just sawing off uh, the two bottom legs just there uh, to create clearance space for us uh, over the concrete and to give us enough space underneath it to be able to put the bark chippings down. So I'm really pleased with the way the gate has turned out. The excavation we had to just modify slightly. We made sure that there was a clearance space throughout the entire path that the gate opens of at least 10 centimeters, which means that we can put bark into five to seven centimeters. So it's nicely compacted. Then we have extended our chicken wire, which runs from the end there all the way underneath the gate. And it meets up with the chicken wire inside the veg patch. I'm probably also going to build a small wooden frame just around the area of the excavation to keep the bark in. So as you know, this is the first ever veg patch that we have built and we have hit our first major snag with regards to this particular project. Our goal in building this veg patch is to obviously have something that is functional and produces vegetables for us uh, that looks good, that uh, basically blends into the property and also is practical in the sense that we want to keep little animals such as rabbits out. We've seen a lot of posts online where people have written that rabbits have gotten into their veg patches and have completely decimated their crops. So our objective is to obviously rabbit proof ours as best we can, uh, which we've already detailed in a previous video. The gate, however, is one of the weakest points with regards to keeping rabbits out. So that is why we've run the chicken wire underneath the gate and we've placed our gate as low as possible to the ground. When we commenced this project, we did a lot of research with regards to how to 
build veg patches on slopes, which is why we were able to put our fence in the way that we did. And that looks good. But during the course of our research, we were not able to find any information that provides any details with regards to how to build and construct a gate that opens with the slope running away from you. So the easiest thing to do is to obviously just elevate your gate, pick it up so that it clears the ground, uh, and then it basically opens. We can't do that uh, because we have laid the bark chippings on that side. Uh, and had we done that, we still would have had quite a bit of clearance underneath the gate. So what we've done is we've placed our gate at the lowest level that we possibly can. And when I started thinking about this project, uh, the obvious thing for us to do was to build that excavation and to push it away from us. That has all been very good and well up until the point where I placed the sand in yesterday and I confronted an obvious issue. With our gate closed, everything is fine. As the gate opens, we can see our clearance underneath where the bark chippings are gonna be uh, is great. This is where the problem starts. So you hit the end, you can see the sand at the back. That obviously can't be filled with bark chippings. And then you've got this little bank at the back where if you pile it up with wood chippings, it's merely just going to slide down and you'll constantly be left with uh, an exposed area. When we moved into our property, the previous owners had gutted uh, big portions of the insides. And when they did that, they extracted a lot of the old oak beams inside the property, uh, which they left in the garage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the wood frame that I've made and I'm gonna replace it with the old oak beams. So after endless measurements, planning, cutting, trimming, and balancing, we have finally got our beam in place. He is uh, almost perfect with regards to the ground. Now, as you can see, he's just balanced on a couple of bricks and stones. But uh, from, from this perspective, it actually is perfect. Um, having that cavity underneath is going to work very, very well for us. Because what it'll do is we'll be able to put the wood chippings in there uh, to create the illusion that uh, everything is running along with the step. But obviously we can't just leave it balancing on the stones. So we've mixed up some mortar. It's just a 2 to one so it's, it's very cementy. So I'm hoping that it's going to be really strong. It's uh, obviously quite dry. I don't want it running all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mortar and I'm going to place it underneath the beam. So it's going to create basically a mortar slash cement base for it to sit on. But I'm going to push it back far enough so that we can put the bark chippings in front of it so that you don't see the cement. As we can see, I have now cemented our beam in. I did this two days ago to give the cement enough time to cure and set. It's now looking really, really good and really solid. So the next step for us now is to put the side supports in, which I'm going to be utilizing from our reclaimed wood. And we will be on our way to hopefully finally completing this gate, which really has been just an exhausting exercise. Based on my skill set, this has certainly been an extremely tricky thing to do. Certainly had to use a lot of brain power to try and figure this out, and I'm hoping I'm getting in the right direction. So our side wall is in, as we can see. It looks really, really good. So now when we open the gate, we can see that with the bark chippings at the bottom, we've got a smart edge at the, at the end, which is what we were after. Uh, in terms of the wall, what I did is, so uh, you can see that there are no visible screws. I basically started at the at the top, got my top piece in, then dropped the layer and drilled in from the bottom. So I was constantly uh, working upside down just to make sure that I was always screwing in from the bottom. That has made a, a really tidy little wall for us, which I'm really, really pleased with. So I think that's good. Now all that remains is to put that one in. This is going to be the far easier side to work on because there's only going to be one uh, layer that we've got to get in underneath the top piece. So that's it. Both sides are completed. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. I love the character of the old beams. I'm not sure whether I mentioned at the outset, I said that the beams are old. Uh, we think that they're about 180 years old, which would be more or less the age of the house. So it looks pretty good. 
Um, I think that once the bark is in, at the moment it all just looks very, very raw. Uh, but like I said, once the bark's in, I think it'll just create that contrast that we need. Um, and it just looks, uh, I think it looks really smart and really cool. When we open the gate, it also acts as a pretty strong gate stop, which is, uh, which is great. And same thing on the other side. So that's it. I'm absolutely exhausted. It's been another very, very long day. A lot of walking up and down the hill up towards the house. So tomorrow it's going to be probably another six to ten trips with the wheelbarrow. You can see the barks and the yellow bags just up at the top of the hill. Uh, they'll get transported down here. We'll finish this and fingers crossed that everything works out the way that I have planned in version 2.0 of our gate. So that's it. We'll catch up tomorrow. So it's actually turned out really well. We have filled our step with the bark chippings. Uh, the step isn't as pronounced as I thought it was going to be. It's actually quite manageable. You can get a wheelbarrow up and down there quite easily. It looks really, really neat from the sides, which is what we were hoping for. So most importantly, when the gate is closed, we can see that there is no gap between the gate and the ground which is what our main purpose was behind this uh, gate. Uh, there is now very little possibility of uh, any animals burrowing in underneath there. And if they do try to burrow, they're just going to hit the chicken wire that's right underneath there. So that's it for part five of this video. Thanks for watching. In part six, we're going to start looking at the vegetables that we've planted. We're hoping to get more deliveries this week. Uh, we'll give you a, a progress updates with regards to uh, how everything is faring, what succeeded and what hasn't. Uh, and we'll also look at the other finishing touches that we're going to touch on. You can see just behind me, uh, we've already started planting the rosemary on the outside of the veg patch. So those are all things that we will cover in part six. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on part six. And we'll see you then. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. You can also follow us on Twitter or check out our website at myhomefarm.co.uk. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos you would like to see, please leave a comment. We hope to see you on our next video.